In this video, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to stitch in hand, also known as the sewing method, and double the speed of your stitching quickly. Hi, my name is Marie, and this is Caterpillar Cross Stitch Channel. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is all about cross stitching and tutorials. So hit like and subscribe if you've learned something new today. Remember to also follow us on Instagram and Facebook for all the stitching news. If you've ever wanted to give stitching in hand a go or are simply looking for a few extra tips, this is the right place to be. Today, I will teach you three basic types of stitches used in the sewing method. After watching this video, you will be able to start practicing your stitching in hand skills and start stitching quicker in no time. Let's get started. We'll start with holding the fabric correctly. When stitching in hand, holding the fabric incorrectly may result in cramps in your hand. So let's see how to prevent that. You want to roll your fabric quite tightly up to where you are stitching and then secure it with a wonder clip or a spool hugger to prevent it from unrolling and having to adjust it every time you let go of it. If you try to just scrunch the fabric in your non-dominant hand, it might get too bulky and will eventually cause cramps in your hand. Now that our fabric is ready, let's look at the three basic stitches of the sewing method. The first type of stitch is suitable for a bottom right corner start. This stitch travels from bottom up and from right to left. Start with the loop method as usual, and then put your needle in the top right corner. Then use the sewing method to bring your needle through the upper left corner and finish the stitch on bottom left. This stitch is excellent for the so-called Danish method of stitching, meaning making a row of bottom leg of the stitch only, and then go back and finish the row with top leg of the stitch. If you need to start a new row, you'll just bring the needle in the upper right corner of the next row and you're ready to repeat. And this is how this stitch looks like from the back. The second type of stitch is suitable for a upper left corner start. This stitch travels from top to bottom and from left to right. Start with the loop method, then bring your needle up in the bottom left corner and then use the sewing method to bring your needle through the lower right corner and finish the stitching in the top right corner. You can also use the Danish method with this stitch, making a row of bottom leg of the stitch only and then go back and finish the row with top leg of the stitch. If you need to start a new row, you'll just bring the needle in the bottom left corner of the next row and you're ready to repeat. This is how the stitch looks like from the back. You can see it's the same as the previous stitch we've seen. The third type of stitch is so-called Victorian stitch, also called the English method of stitching, and it travels from right to left. We want to use this type of stitch for a long row of stitches where we simply don't want to go back with the thread, but want our thread to remain at the end of the row and continue stitching from there. Let me show you. Start in the bottom left corner of your stitch and then bring your needle through to the top left corner. Finish your stitch in the bottom right corner and continue to the next bottom left. This is how you seamlessly make a row of stitches and get your thread from point A to B. At the end of the row, you can simply start a new row of stitches like this. This is how the stitch looks like from the back. You can see that where the back thread was vertical on the previous stitches, it is horizontal on this one. 
In reality, your project will be a mixture of all three types of stitches we've just seen. My preferred type is stitch number one, but I will swap between all three types of stitches depending on where I need my thread to go and finish. Let's look a bit at traveling with your thread and switching between the stitches to show you what I mean. Let's look a bit at traveling with your thread and switching between the stitches. I will stitch a square and continue with a diagonal line going down and up. I'm starting in the bottom with our stitch number one, that is right to left stitch and going back to finish it with the top leg. I'm continuing with the same type of stitch while stitching the upwards row. Then I need to stitch right to left and I want my thread to stay at the end of the row. So I'm switching to our stitch number three, the Victorian stitch. At the end of the row, it's time to change the stitch again to stitch number two, our top to bottom stitch. Now I'm starting my diagonal row of stitching. Diagonal line in the downwards direction allows for all three types of stitches we've learned today. So you see me switching between these. It is completely up to you to choose which one you prefer. To finish our diagonal stitch in the upwards direction, I am using stitch number one again, the bottom to top stitch. When looking at the back of the fabric, we see vertical lines for stitches one and two and horizontal for the Victorian stitch. The diagonal lines are a complete mix of the two. This might feel a little overwhelming to begin with, but I promise with practice, it will be an easy breeze. Stop the video, re-watch it, and most importantly, practice. Start with easy lines on a scrap piece of fabric with leftover thread. Go left to right, right to left, up and down and diagonal. Find easy patterns to practice with, with large blocks of color. Our six free patterns are actually absolutely perfect for this. So if you haven't already, go in the description below where we've got our newsletter sign up link. If you sign up to your newsletter with your email address, we will immediately send you a PDF full of six ready to practice with, easy to follow patterns into your inbox. In the beginning of this video, I have made a bold statement that this method will double the speed of your stitching. Well, I have decided to conduct an experiment to see if that's actually right. I have taken the first part of the Touch of Magic stitch along and stitched for 30 minutes on it with the sewing method and for 30 minutes with the classic stabbing method in the hoop. Let's see what's the result. Let me start with the sewing method. This is my starting point, a blank canvas. I am starting with stitch number two, but switching between all three stitches depending on where I need my thread to end. Fast forward to 30 minutes mark. This is what I've been able to stitch in that time. 134 stitches in total. Let's look at the stabbing method next. I am bringing my head up and down around the hoop. In fact, the three basic stitches I am using in this method are identical to the ones I've shown you earlier. The only difference is that my fabric is stretched in a hoop and so I can't bring the needle through the fabric in one move, but have to stab the fabric from the top and the bottom. Fast forward to 30 minutes mark. This is what I've been able to stitch in that time, 85 stitches in total. 
as you can see, I was able to stitch significantly more with the sewing method. And had I been in my comfy stitchy spot, in my perfect stitchy position, I truly believe I would have been able to stitch even faster. It is not a coincidence that some of the most famous floss tubers are avid advocates of the stitching in hand method and are able to stitch so many projects in short time. And this is my finished part one of the Touch of Magic Stitch Along, finished in two stitching sessions in the evening during work week. So what do you think? Will you give it a go? Do you have any tips or tricks of yours to share or do you have any questions? Let us know in the comments below. If you don't already have the Touch of Magic Stitch Along and would like to stitch it with me and thousands of other stitches around the world, there's a link in the description below to purchase it directly on our website www.caterpillarcrossstitch.com as well as all the other featured patterns in this video. Remember, you can also join almost 15,000 other stitches in our Facebook group and share your progress there with people who will celebrate it with you and are always ready to help. And that's it from us at Caterpillar Cross Stitch today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next Monday. Thank you.